I know we don't even notice it yet. Uh, good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, September 20th, 2016 Budget Committee meeting in Hampton. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order and I'd like to have you all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, now that we're back from a uh, two-month <laughs> summer vacation, <laughs> um, several things have happened in the last week. Our chairman has accepted a job, and he has sent in his resignation because he can't take the time that this job requires. And uh, so we're, we're missing the chairman, and along with the chairman, the secretary left. So we're down a secretary and a chairman. So I would like to uh, ask the board if there's any nominations for a new chairman. Well, first, uh, yep. um, can we vote to accept the resignation? It's already been turned into the yeah, town clerk. Okay. And, and, you know, it's it's done. Okay. Yeah. So I'd like to nominate. I'm going to do it that way. Okay. Sonny, are you making a motion to nominate yeah. Mary Louise? I'll second it. Steve seconds it. Is there any other nominations? I'll nominate Brian Lapham. If he'll accept it. Brian Lapham will not accept it. Thank you very much, though. Is, is that it? Ready to vote on this? Mm -hmm. Good. All those in favor of Mary Louise? All those opposed? Wow. Well, the I'm vote? Abstaining. One abstention. One abstention. Or two. Yep. Come right up, young lady. Have a seat. <laughs> See, now you get two seats. You got an extra seat. Yeah, that's right. Get right into that hot seat. You need to move over. You, oh, you want me to move? I can move. I don't care. Come on over here, Mike. Sit next to me. We'll do it the way we used to do it. Oh, jeez. Don't do that. It'd be old-fashioned. I need to see. Oh, I just have to go down. Cheers. This is... Have it down? I don't like to sit on the floor. Okay. Okay. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Uh, Clough, as vice chairman, had a little fast footwork to do uh, this past weekend and uh, pulled things together for the committee. Um, but the secretary, as you may have noted in Nick's email, uh, will no longer be working with the committee. So I made a few calls. Um, Nathan was kind enough to make a recommendation. But unfortunately, the nice young person is pregnant with twins, and so <laughs> um, that probably wasn't going to be viable for this year. Um, so uh, Eileen Latimer has volunteered to serve as the secretary with Joan Rice as a backup if needed. So if you would be kind enough to make a motion because we need to have the secretary authorized so that, and Eileen will be doing this from home, as will Joan if necessary. They will do this from online watching the meeting. I'll make that motion. Well, thank you, sir. I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Henderson. Okay. Uh, I appreciate that, and I really appreciate both ladies uh, volunteering because it's worth your life to find a secretary these days. Uh, in favor of F Mrs. Uh, Latimer as secretary to the Budget Committee with Mrs. Rice as backup. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, one question. Yes, sir. Uh, what are they going to get paid? <laughs> the same amount as, as the secretary has been paid, $125 per meeting. I will mention, however, that 
the secretary will be submitting her bill for a meeting and that will not go to finance until it is signed by the chairman because so i want to make sure that anything is going through finance one, one additional thing um, joan always used to take care of a manifest with all of the people's names right. and their phone numbers yeah. and, and emails right. could you ask or i think i would it would be nice if that was part of the duty of the new secretary. Yeah, Eileen is familiar. The, the yeah. tremendous advantage is that both ladies are very familiar mm -hmm. with the committee and the members of the committee and so forth. Okay, now um, there will be there a vacancy now on the budget committee because we need to be up to 13. So may I make a public plea <coughs> for individuals who are interested Call me, email me, call me the vice, call for the vice chairman, and uh, leave your name and ask questions if any. I would like to have the vacancy filled before our meeting in October, because October will commence the really hard work uh, of the committee mm -hmm. um, and getting really getting the budget set up. Um, I want to introduce the members just for the public. And uh, your attendance will be confirmed. Uh, starting on the viewer's right, school board representative and longtime hard worker, Virginia Bridler Russell, <laughs> select man representative, Regina Barnes, Michael Pierce, Sonny Kravitz, Brian Lapham, Stephen Henderson. Proceeding around to my right is our hardworking vice chairman, Mike Pluff. <laughs> Steve LeBranch, Precinct Treasurer, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Jones, Tim Jones, Danielle Augustine, uh, uh, <laughs> thank you, and Bob Ladd. And I did have the you SAU after in. Norman, but Norman, would you mind if, if this SAU is usually pretty succinct? Do you mind if SAU goes first? <laughs> My pleasure. Yes. Great. Welcoming Superintendent Murphy and Finance Officer Nathan Lunny and Chairman of the School Board, Les Shepard, and Pepper Ring is back there somewhere. <laughs> Welcome, thank you, and we look forward to seeing you every time you come in. Well, thank you. We, we're thrilled to be here again, and uh, we hope tonight to be able to share with you some, uh, some data that's uh, around the events of last year. Um, certainly the um, budgetary issues are important to share, but also some, some of the highlights of the year. And then we'll get into a little bit of, uh, give you a little picture about what's coming, uh, as much as what we know at this point. Uh, so we hope, and then we'll answer questions. Um, just a couple things. I did put a trifold on your table. That's yes. fairly new, updated information with staff and some just some data about the school district. Excellent. Um, we try to keep that current every year. Could you go back to that opening page? Yep. I can't. I I when we got this picture, I just have to tell you, these are our kids. These are our Hampton kids. You know, you look at this picture and you say, this looks like a picture you'd see in a magazine or a or you know a commercial for some company but those are our kids working on together in a group activity with their Chromebooks and I, I'm I'm thinking boy this is a real plug for our district but I couldn't resist uh, sharing the pictures of the kids they're just beautiful so um, but we have beautiful kids anyway so um, we'll go on you wanna so so let me just jump right into um, you have in front of you a, a the handouts, these are right. the clips that we're going to show tonight. Um, you have that in front of you. I thought I'd take a few minutes and kind of review some of the accomplishments for this past year. We have really moved forward with STEAM. And some people say STEAM, STEM, what is it? STEAM is science, technology, engineering, the arts, and math. Because there's so many opportunities for art, music, and other kinds of activities that the kids do that, that can be integrated into science and technology. So um, the, the teachers and the science committee really made that move to STEAM, both at um, Hampton Academy, at Marston and Center. At Marston, we've been very fortunate through a significant donation 
uh, from, uh, from, from residents to open an innovation lab this year at Marston School. This is all around STEAM activities where kids will be in using uh, robotics and Lego robotics and different um, activities to uh, address standards in science, technology, engineering, the arts, and math. So we're pretty excited about that. And as you know, we've been focused on uh, STEAM activities at the middle school for the last three years. All of our students, grades six through eight, are exposed to those activities. Uh, we have a teacher who has been trained in this area, so we're very fortunate uh, to continue to do that. Of course, that um, that uh, we've been very fortunate to do a one-to-one -one computing effort. Um, starting in third grade, every student from grades three through eight have a Chromebook, uh, which they use. Uh, we do. We allow the older ones to use it just like a textbook and take it home. The younger ones we still monitor a little bit, you know, because they're still learning the right use of things, and so teachers tend to hold them back a little bit and don't take them home. But um, the youngsters are using them in all of their classrooms, English, language arts, and their math classes, science and social studies. So we've we we just uh, we've been thrilled with it. It grades the kindergarten one and two all have access to technology. Um, they haven't been assigned a Chromebook, but they all have access to either iPads or a laptop or a desktop uh, computer so that they can do activities in their classrooms. Uh, this, this summer and this past year, we really focused on the science curriculum and performance assessments. You probably wonder what that is. You know, um, a few years ago when I was in school, and just a few years ago, I might add, <laughs> a lot of the, when you were as, as tested or you had an assessment, it was multiple choice, you know, and it was A, B, C, or D. And we, we really have moved away from that kind of assessment. We now give the kids performance assessments. They have, um, they have a, a topic. Uh, they have a particular um, item that they want to analyze or they want to, um, to look at and study. Uh, so we, they have an opportunity to work either together or individually to take performance assessments. And our teachers spent the summer developing those. So the kids would have a chance to not just sort of memorize facts but be able to use information in a way that transi transition the learning into all of the subject areas. So we spent a lot of time in, in that area, particularly in science. Um, I think Nathan will highlight food service a little bit. You want to? Oh, talk I, about? I, you know, we we talked for, or well, sadly, we talked for some number of years about the deficits uh, in operations in food service. Um, we were excited, uh, excited to complete last fiscal year, that being 14-15, with a uh, $16,000, $17,000 dollars surplus. Uh, one of the operational realities was Head Start uh, joining us at Center School and contracting for food service for breakfast and lunch for that, that program. That was a, a revenue generator that we hadn't anticipated when we set that year in motion. This year, costs are up, uh, labor costs, materials costs and the uh, total number of meals are down, but we managed to squeak, uh, squeak into the black with an $824 surplus. So, uh, so we, didn't, we, we, didn't, we didn't fall into the status of insolvency, if you want to call it that. Uh, and I'm really pleased for the work that Mary did. We spent some time this summer talking about what was it that led to some of the rising costs, where can we curtail some. Uh, it's forever a challenge to, to, to grow or to even, it seems, maintain participation to keep meal counts up. Mary Borg, our food service director, you know, we make, we chuckle all the time. Mary loves, loves to feed the babies. I mean, it's all about food in the belly. So uh, <laughs> that's really the mainstay. I mean, that's the, that's the, the, the program's focus. And, and we work really hard to make sure that we do that uh, cost effectively. It's been tough. Some of the nutritional standards have changed. Uh, kids grow up with white pasta, and now they have wheat pasta in the food service program, and that extends to breads and to pizzas and to you name it. So she's worked really hard to bring taste buds along with the federal standards, and, and uh, we appreciate all the effort there. What Nathan didn't tell you was for the first four years, we were in deficit. We were in red. Yep. And to us, to the degree that the school board had to, with their operational budget, support that deficit, and uh, and they have to by law, they must. Um, and uh, so that w that never sat well with us, of course. And uh, but Mary and Nathan and the staff have really made those kinds of improvements to um, to keep us in the black, 
But most importantly, we expose the kids to a variety of foods. It isn't, you know, straight standard frozen foods. I mean, she's make she there's fruits and vegetables and salad. Um, and it's just a, a, an array of foods for the kids uh, and even the little ones to test and try. And, you know, they're reticent at times to eat new foods. But that's part of a hot lunch program in schools. It isn't just about putting food in their belly. It's about exposing them to healthy foods and, and setting them on the path uh, for, for good nutrition. So we're pretty pleased with that, with that program and, and what's happened. The, another piece of this is wellness, and this program is, is more specific to the staff. Um, three or four years ago, Nathan and I uh, were concerned about, obviously, rising health costs. How could we manage rising health costs besides looking at different programs, by looking at what uh, different companies might offer, and we did all that. But we also wanted to have a healthy staff. We wanted them in the classroom every day. Um, as you know, when a teacher is out of the classroom, it requires a substitute teacher. That's an additional cost for us in order to uh, make sure that the kids um, have supervision and education. And so um, with that in mind, we gathered a wellness committee, and we have been working on all kinds of wellness activities for our staff. And we have had some significant decreases in absenteeism uh, with our staff. Uh, we have been um, honored by the state for the work that we've done. Nathan and I just presented at a state conference on a wellness program here in Hampton and the kinds of things we're doing and keeping our costs in check. Now, as you all know, the medical costs are, are horrific, um, but um, we have implemented strategies with our teachers to help us keep those costs down. So um, we will continue to do that, but we're, we're quite proud of the work that we did uh, around that as we try to control that in the budget. The other area that we've been fairly successful in is our grants. Some of them are entitlements. That means that based on our, our numbers, based on our uh, equalized evaluation, based on our free and reduced numbers, we get uh, entitlements in the areas of IDEA, which is your special education, slash preschool money. We also get two, uh, three different titles. One, Title I, which um, is, again, an entitlement for uh, students uh, that are at poverty. We, uh, we have a Title II grant, which is um, all around providing training, uh, funding for, for our teachers and staff. And then the third one is Title III, another entitlement, which is based on our English language learners, English speakers of other languages. And we work with a bunch of school districts to attain those funds. So those are pretty much entitlements. But we have got grants that weren't. Title 10 is an additional grant for homeless kids. So we received money and are able to provide additional program. We also received just, just the beginning of the school year a $15,000 grant for a program around um, differentiation in the classroom so the teachers learn skills about how to differentiate their teaching instruction. Uh, we also... Um, it's on the next page. It's Actually, on the next we page. That, That's right. We secured right. a $24,000 Homeland Security grant for security improvements, which are going into, in our case, uh, digital cameras and surveillance uh, uh, on the exterior perimeter of the buildings. So. And as you know, we were pretty successful with our safe routes to school. We have a great plan. We have priorities, and uh, so we'll move. It, we'll be moving forward with that. Um, we didn't get any additional monies, although we are right now uh, working in collaboration with the Public Works Department in Hampton for a grant uh, that you get through TAP, which is a transportation alternative program. It's called the Next Step for Safe Routes, and so because we had. Uh, a lot of the planning already done and with engineers and um, uh, that, that we used, uh, we, we think we're in pretty good places for that grant. We'll, I don't know when we are going to get noticed on it, but we did submit it. Uh, uh, the Public Works Department submitted it, so yeah. we're, we're excited about that. This past year, I wanted to talk a little bit about awards and recognition. Um, you know, you have to you have to make sure that people understand the good things that happen. You know, you hear a lot of stories sometimes, but it's really important that people understand that there are a lot of good things happening every day in the Hampton schools. Uh, both uh, Center and Marston received uh, state uh, blue ribbon awards for their volunteer programs. We have hundreds of people that volunteer in our schools every day and helping youngsters, helping teachers, 
and boy, it's it's so beneficial to everyone. Uh, uh, Hampton Academy was also recognized uh, this year as a um, uh, recognized for their middle education program uh, by the state eddies uh, committee. Our PTA was a unit of the year uh, by the uh, state PTA for all the work that they do in town, um, for the programs that they run for the youngsters, for <coughs> aspects of their work. Uh, matter of fact, they're meeting tonight. Um, and and it, and the last thing that we we felt Nathan and I felt pretty strongly about was the kinds of donations that we get every year. Uh, this year we had donations uh, from uh, PTA and other affiliated uh, groups for over thirty thousand dollars. That all goes back into the with the kids. And um, as as Nate mentioned, we also had the Homeland Security grant for about twenty four thousand dollars. So. We feel pretty good about that, and we will continue those efforts uh, this year. The Budget Committee is obviously interested in budget, and we come each year this time to give you a quick snapshot of how we uh, how we spent your dollars last year. So uh, on page 8 of your packet is, uh, excuse me, 7, on page 7 of your packet is a budget summary. Mm -hmm. The back side of that is a revenue summary that falls to a, a fund balance at the bottom line. Uh, at the highest level, I'll just tell you that we we uh, carry an operating surplus at the end of the year of three hundred and twenty-six, almost three hundred twenty-seven thousand uh, dollars. We had excess revenues driven largely by uh, Medicaid uh, to schools reimbursements that are difficult to estimate. We never want to overestimate them. Uh, some number of the of the services that we provide that are qualified or covered and reimbursed under Medicaid schools um, are in programs that are threatened every cycle by the legislature uh, here and abroad or here <laughs> here and here and south of here um, for you know targeted for cuts. So I'm really careful about estimating those. In this case, we estimated forty five thousand and brought in sixty three thousand more. That makes up the lion's share of the of the revenue excess. But combined. Your operating, uh, your operating surplus on the general fund side that will offset taxes at this next tax set, uh, tax rate setting cycle, four hundred and twenty-five thousand. Um, I threw in as well. It's important to note that federal dollars. Kathleen was just talking about the titles, uh, the entitlement programs, IDEA, etc. Those federal grants added up to just under five hundred and forty thousand uh, dollars that help fund programs in our schools. We mentioned food service, revenues of 435 and expenses of 434 brought us that $800 net surplus that I mentioned. Uh, and we always keep tabs on uh, our trust fund. We have an expendable trust fund for the purposes of special education costs. Uh, that uh, is right about $225,000. Now that trust fund is managed as they all are by the trustees, the trust funds here in the town. Um, so back to page seven and eight. Certainly, open any questions that you might have if you if you were to look down through the budget summary. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I gave you the high level. Um, I can a couple of quick quick blips are one. Remember, this is fifteen sixteen, so not the school year that we've just entered, but the one just completed. Going into that year, we had estimated or had budgeted for teachers. Uh, seven each at the primary grades, kindergarten, first, and second. Ultimately, the enrollment didn't direct or dictate that many. We ended up with one less teacher at kindergarten, one less teacher at second grade. So those two salaries remain unspent, as does a paraprofessional teaching assistant that goes along with that kindergarten classroom. So you see some regular education costs. Those are largely salaries left over, and there's some benefit dollars to go with them later down in the budget. Uh, but our special education costs for some of the identified students in our in our district were greater than were anticipated. We had some out of district placements that had costs related to it that have not been anticipated in the budget. So you'll see that we've got some some overage in the area of special education. Uh, there are a couple of bullets. I've tried to put notes on the side to give you some cryptic <laughs> concept of what might drive what might be the drivers. Uh, we had. Uh, we had hiring for, to replace some retirements, and those hires uh, generated some savings in a number of those positions. And uh, the superintendent made a comment just a second ago about safe routes to school. The board did encumber dollars to 
provide for a Winnicunit Road improvement out in front of Center School, the sidewalk and crosswalk from Center School across to nearly in front of the town hall between here and Toll Ave. Yeah. And uh, we, we were unsuccessful in, in two bidding cycles to find a bidder. In the first round, we had zero bidders. In the second round, the only bid that was received was twice the money that we had set aside, mm -hmm. proving to us that the market had plenty of work and, and no interest in expanding and growing to meet that, that need. We weren't big enough to drive anybody to hire another team, I guess. So, so we'll, look for that, uh, we'll look for that another spring. But um, that's the budget summary. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Uh, on your trifold, Nathan, your master school's got a huge enrollment. Forty-one hundred and thirty-five. <laughs> Slip of the hand. Look at that. It's either it's either four thirteen or four fifteen, and I don't remember now. Was it four thirteen? Is that how the math is out? Yeah. I thank you. Be a little crowded. Thank you. Oh, Did we you? added an extra number there, didn't yeah. we? Got okay. another couple of questions. <coughs> You know, it proves that I can't, I can't, shouldn't proofread my own, yes? Well, I proofread it too. You run too fast. <laughs> Any other questions on this Thanks. side? Yeah, I've still... You have another one, Sonny? Yeah, okay. i got a couple more. Uh, you know, it's political season, so I get to see and go to, go, go to events in Northampton, Hampton Falls, and both those towns turned their teachers' Warren article down last year. I mentioned the project that I did last year to put the addition on the Center Street School, you know, incorporate it and build a brand new middle school because the existing site is too small for the for sports. People, these are ele elected officials in these two towns. When I mentioned a regional junior high, they said they'd love it. It reduced everybody's cost. That's so, so, so the school board has reached out to Hampton Falls. Uh, well, uh, the, I've reached out to some of the electors. Right, and they were. We didn't. Events. We didn't receive. They didn't receive mm. a positive response, and that doesn't mean that the issue is no. We're not going to. They're not going to continue because the board believes that there is, there could be a wonderful regional relationship. Yeah. With the uh, two towns, uh, and it's interesting because some of the some of them are small, and they can't like they can't even field teams, mm -hmm. you know. And they ask if they could join our team, you know. So there's a lot of opportunity here for us to collaborate, yeah. and we're and the board has made it very clear that they're open to it, um, but they have not received the uh, response from uh, at, at least Hampton Falls. <laughs> Uh, the next question I had was, you know, on the Sacred Heart. You know, they use our playing fields, right? The recreation fields. What? You know, and we have, what, about 42 students from Hampton, and, and I see they're going to have a warrant article of 46,000. You know, I'm just curious. You know, they should be paying Hampton something, but providing them the sports area we don't they have their own area that they use for for their athletics right out back that's not part of our uh, property of that's theirs yeah. um, but um, you're right I mean yeah, there are no, about 45 students and there yeah. is but that's all part of that child benefit warrant article that allows them to receive funding uh, based on the number of kids and their needs and they um, just work very clear whatever they request through that money all has to be processed through our office and I um, re I review the purchase orders along with Nathan before it goes to accounts payable so we do monitor that and it's and it's for technology it's for nursing fees it's for things that they they need a little extra help I with. understand you know but the problem I have public money should go for public education Somebody wants to go to a private school. You know, if, that, if there was a mosque down the street, I don't know whether the war or not would pass. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I understand. We understand. But, but in New Hampshire, it is the law that money can be. Yeah, no, I can uh, Anyone else on Ginny's side having questions? Well, and that article is also approved by the voters. 
Yes. Right. I was just yes. No, I so understand. I mean, and the budget committee. And the budget committee. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it's a citizen's petition. Yeah. It's not something that's right. the board Correct. Votes they have to petition every year. Petition. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody on Mike's side? Any other questions? I have a couple of real quick comments. Yes, I do. Oh, you do. All right. Go ahead. Good evening, Kathleen. Good evening, Mason. Good evening. I understand that uh, by looking at your numbers, just, just to get it out there, we're spending something over eighteen and a half thousand dollars per student. Is that fairly accurate? Uh, we work with the, the the Department of Ed's cost per pupil is calculated differently. It's in the fifteen thousand range, but your number is a raw appropriation divided by a raw enrollment, and I would I would concur. I'm sure if I did the math, it'd be about that. Yeah, it's actually eighteen thousand seven hundred seventy dollars without the <laughs> Fed choosing to uh, distort it in some favorable way, uh, or some sensible way. I guess you well, should write it that just way. This is to be clear <coughs> that it isn't distorted. Well, I, I said I corrected uh, I, myself. I, I, I fav a, a more accurate or more precise. The Department way. of Ed um, takes the the information that we send that Nathan sends at the end of the year about our expenditures. Um, and obviously they have all the data around pupils, but they don't include in the, the calculation for cost per pupil two things. They don't include transportation because in Hampton our transportation system is within the radius of the town. If you live in uh, Groveton or you live in Gorham, your buses travel much greater distance and so that they take that out. The second, that they, the second item that they take out of the calculation is the bond for school building projects because that really does, um, is more cr closely related to what that particular community needs. So, but when, when Tim does the calculation the way he did it, that's correct. Yeah, I'm looking at it from the taxpayer's point of view. Um, well, you know we appreciate that. Yeah. You get what, 16, that's why I'm here, 16, to look eight? at the taxpayer's point of view. I have that's why we're all here, that. actually. That's right. <laughs> okay, uh, I just wanted to get that established. Right. Uh, is that tending upward or downward as, as you would uh, estimate? For next year? Well, I mean, obviously we haven't, we're just beginning the process of the prior developing year, our budget. No, we actually have, um, we just did that too yesterday. We have the calculation for the up changes in our budget. Uh, I, I'm still working on an analysis of the assessments over time, but it's, uh, it's, uh, over the five years we've been here, it's running at about a 1.8% Assessment assessment increase each year. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> I noticed that uh, because I do watch your school committee meetings, as you know. <coughs> we appreciate that. And so uh, those questions were formulated during the course of the season, as well as during the course of your presentation. Uh, now you changed one of the schools had a part time vice principal, although I note you now call them assistant principals, right? Yes. Um, so far, sorry for my old phraseology no, that's fine. here. That's fine. So the assistant uh, principal in one of the schools was once part-time. That's correct. And has now been replaced with full-time. That's correct. And from what I understand from a prior meeting that you had, it was, it was stated that there was no cost at all to that. Is that true? No. The, the, what, the, what the cost associated, there was no cost increase because we did that, because the board had anticipated that they would go to a full-time position, and they were waiting for further data before they made that decision, and that the money for that position was in the budget. So it wasn't, they weren't asking for additional monies. Mm -hmm. Those monies were already approved as part of the 15, as part of the 16, 17 budget. Right, so it didn't cost any extra well, money. Well, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it was, that's what it was being presented as, as I it, saw it on TV. And right. what you're saying well, now seems to be I'm, saying the same thing. Then I'm clarifying okay. it. That was not their intent. The money that w was, clearly allocated for that position was in the budget and when they decided to go to a full-time position uh, trying to meet the best interests of the students and the school they um, they had the appropriation necessary without taking the money from somewhere else or running a deficit in that line mm -hmm. right right so as a consequence of this decision next year's budget how will it be affected Next year's budget will reflect a full-time assistant principal. Which will be an increase over mm, this year's budget. No, because that So position, it doesn't cost us anything, then. It's free. <laughs> We're getting 20 extra hours of labor for the, free. <coughs> <coughs> 
no, we're not getting 20 hours of free labor. All, I'm, I, I, I'm trying to make a point that the money was appropriated in the 1617 budget, and when we go and develop the budget for 1718, that position will be there, mm -hmm. and except for uh, an increase in cost of living, that uh, that item will be will remain steady. Yeah. Right. So what I'm hearing is, with the exception of a cost of living, it's not costing us anything to move from part time to full time. Well, it was appropriated before. Well, right. the before part time before. person not question was the making it's the part. Okay. The part-time person that was there was making less <coughs> than what was in the budget yeah. because they weren't working as many hours, so we didn't pay them as much. Right. And so there was always a, a delta in that line when we had mm -hmm. the part-time because yeah. we put in X amount of dollars, but they didn't earn that much money because they were only part-time. Yeah. I see. So they were not actually... Uh, billing for the for for the full amount that was that doesn't say they weren't working. That was in the, the line, right? Time. Right. That was in the budget. Right. But right. now that we went full time, of course, that will be fully because right. it's salary right. now. It's not right. a matter of time. Mm -hmm. it's salary, right? Yeah. So it's, now it's going to be fully utilized. But it's just like a teacher, Nathan. Um, Nathan. Uh, so the savings is gone that that we had. Right. That's correct. So all right. So the That's savings correct. is gone. The savings is gone. So the cost was we lost the savings. Perhaps. That's how you could look at <laughs> Perhaps, <that>. okay. <laughs> but it's no different than a, a, when we had a retirement of a teacher who was here for 30 years right. um, with a master's degree on top step versus uh, some of the young new teachers that we've recently hired coming in with a first step one. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a significant delta, and we anticipate that. I mean, we know that's happened, but the money that's in the budget oh. reflects that full-time... From, from the taxpayer point of view, there is a real difference, Kathleen. When I observed on your on your meetings on this topic, the uh, administration did not approve of this move. Is that correct? It was not I recommended by the. It was not recommended by the administration. That's correct. Whereas these other things that you're saying are similar to were all, in fact, recommended by the administration. So that's a huge difference. This was a decision made wholly by those who were elected by the voters to go about and make such decisions. Right. It's not a, an administration decision. So there is a big difference in my mind. The voters should be aware when they go to the ballots just exactly what they're voting for. So I'm just bringing sunlight on the issue, that's all. Right. But people are, I don't know if I want to get into this debate, but... It's not a debate. Just are, bring the facts out there. That's wait it. Wait a minute. <coughs> people are elected to serve the community. Mm -hmm. The school board makes decisions on which they feel is the best interest. They don't rubber stamp Nathan and I, although we would love that, wouldn't we, Nathan? <laughs> what, but, but you see what I'm saying? There are things that perhaps as administrators we bring to them and they see it differently. But right. you know something? That's the beauty of our relationship with the school board. They are they are our um, gatekeepers. They are our they 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 create and help us create a vision. We work together, and we ex we appreciate when they say, uh, "What were you thinking?" I appreciate that Nathan does too, and and likewise, I hope they feel the same way about us, and I think they do. So we have that wonderful relationship where if they say no to something that I recommend, I don't go home and sulk, Tim, because we have that kind of working relationship, and the community needs to know that. Well, we, I think I, I know. And, and I, I suspect, know you know that. I suspect all of the voters <coughs> know that you're a professional, and you don't go home and sulk. <laughs> no, my Because that's not professional, it. right? And it's, right. it is well recognized by me, and I'm sure everyone here, and likely everyone on TV watching, that the politicians on the school board who were elected to be there to make such decisions are in their authority to make such decisions. That's correct. And the voters ought to know the quality of those decisions that they're making. Okay? And I'm not estimating whether the quality is good or bad. I just wanted to be out there that it was made. Okay. Well, and sir? the cost was a loss of savings. Good God. Right. So, um, no, I'm not. Not set. Okay. I noticed in your most recent meeting, I believe it was September 13th, there was quite a discussion on the class size in the algebra class. I think it was 26. And then you're working to, to find some uh, way of reducing that class size. And I coupled that when I was listening to that discussion with uh, uh, 
a memory that I have of a prior meeting in which the, the, the mass, the standard tests on the mass scores were not as desirable as you had hoped? That's correct. Okay. And so that begged the question in my mind uh, why I don't see, because I'm also a view of Channel 13, why I don't see math classes on Channel 13 to help alleviate the uh, educational need in that space. Just a suggestion. More than a question, a suggestion. The uh, Chromebooks were brought up at the September 13 meeting, and the word, once again, was buying. As you know, we had a discussion last year about this, and it was established that we don't buy them, we lease them. Lease them. But the numbers that I was hearing would suggest purchases. Now, are we dealing with leases or purchases when it comes to Chromebooks? The last 20 that they bought was a purchase. They needed to, what Greg Limperis, our tech director, spoke to was that he had a what he believes to be an immediate need for an additional quantity. So rather than writing a lease for that or amending an existing lease, they, they made a purchase of those. Yeah. I thought your lease was flexible enough so you could change the number of machines. No, we wrote a different lease each year for the, for the site. <coughs> so does this reflect a change in policy on the school board's part that we're going to be moving from leasing to buying? I don't think so. I mean, I'm, we're still budgeting for lease dollars. Uh, our first lease comes comes to an end at the close mm -hmm. of this school year that we're in. I realize this does seem to be in conflict with the prior school board's policy decision with regard to leasing and not buying. That I have to I have to say that that it wasn't a conversation that we wasn't a conversation about leasing or buying that we took to the board. Right. It was a small small dollar by comparison to three hundred buying twenty was and it was. Uh, there's an incongruity there, I'm sure you can acknowledge. I understand. And I'm curious about yep. that incongruity. I'm sure it'll be played up when you return in December with your new budget, right? When we budget for another I cycle. I look forward absolutely. to that clarification. Yep. Uh, also, I noticed, Kathleen, uh, congratulations. You got the uh, meeting following the election in March. Uh, you got a, the school board granted you a three-year contract extension, right? Four years. Four-year contract extension. <laughs> <laughs> And as we all learned in our, I think it was May when we had the New Hampshire Municipal Association in here, uh, that uh, all multi-year contracts require a separate warrant article. So I want you to know that I'm looking forward to re favorably reviewing that warrant article. Uh, sidewalks. I am concerned about sidewalks. Uh, there's been a lot of talk on sidewalks in your various meetings. I believe the number was forty thousand dollars. You were putting forth seventy. Okay. How much? Seventy. Seven zero. Seven zero. No. Seventy thousand dollars. Thank you. My memory is really getting faded in my old age. <laughs> Seventy thousand dollars you've taken out of the operating budget, <coughs> and you put it into some effort to to improve the street and sidewalk in front of Center School, which is located on Winnicott. Kind of, right? Did I get that accurate? <laughs> this bothers me a great deal because uh, you don't own those sidewalks. The school, the school district does not own those sidewalks, nor the street. Yet you're putting money into capital improvements on property you do not own. This is not about sidewalks, it's about the appropriation of money. You know, uh, RSA 32 colon 6 says that no money is to be spent on any purpose that's not in the budget. The purpose, of course, is defined as the line items, which you have listed right here. Now, when I look at these line items, I don't see anything for sidewalks. The closest thing you got is transportation. Now, is that where you spent the money from, was the transportation line item? Oh, where you allocated the money, I should say? Specifically, the dollars were repair and maintenance. In, in the area of buildings and grounds, which is... Wouldn't you think that you know, your average interpretation of buildings and grounds would mean buildings and grounds that you own? I understand what you're saying, Tim, but the bottom line is, is that the committee, the Safe Routes to School Committee, worked in collaboration and went to the Board of Selectmen. We, pr we brought the proposal forward, of which they gave us um, um, blessing on, because we identified five major areas in the community that were putting our kids at risk, 
And then we also met with and talked with the planning board in town and had their blessing, if you will, on that proposal for the for the um, safe routes to school. And those sidewalks and those the effort that the school board was making was in an attempt to ensure that the children had a safe way to school every day. Now, whether that, uh, as you uh, have 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 indicated, that violated an RSA uh, because we don't own the sidewalks. We worked with uh, Chris and Jen at the Public Works Department uh, so that we could do this, this work in collaboration. That, that piece that we were offering in the 70,000 was only a piece of the bigger project that the town was working on. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, we hear what you're saying. I, I made note of that, um, but the board believed that it was more important to ensure that children were walking to school safely and that they could cross the, a major in, major street like Winnicott Road. I'm sure you've been down there in the morning. It is, it is, we had an accident there this year, which was a little bit alarming to some folks. And, and the board felt very strongly uh, that um, we make an effort to uh, um, help uh, re alleviate the, the safety concerns down there. Well, you know, I understand the need for improving sidewalks and things like that. We voted on that in the town budget to do that very thing. And so when I see in the town budget there's a need for improvements on the sidewalks and we vote for it, that's my understanding that that's what the town needs for the town sidewalks. That's what is stated by the town. Now, coming out of that field is the school saying, no, no, we need to do this too. Right? And of course, because we're giving the town money, the town is going to make priority in terms of trying to make it happen because it, from their point of view, it's free money. But from the voters' point of view, the voters sent, uh, what, uh, they approved a uh, $20, $20 million plus budget for education, sidewalks that you do not own or control. And no one assumes that that's going to be in that $20 million. Now, I noticed your last meeting, you had a discussion about a uh, $1 million, well, I'll call it windfall, you did not. Okay. And it represented a $800,000 from the feds with a $200,000 in matching funds. Is that correct? That's correct. Now. That's the TAP grant that I alluded to earlier. Right. <clears throat> and that's, again, sidewalks, isn't it, mostly? Well, not all sidewalks. I mean, we have a, we have a situation at Mill and high street that is going to require a pedestrian walk button so there's mm -hmm. it's lights mm -hmm. it's it's other signage um that would um would assist the drivers as well as the kids mm -hmm. so it isn't just sidewalks mm -hmm. again it's town property it's town responsibility mm -hmm. uh, i'd really prefer the schools yeah. spent focus their attention on education and not on improving town infrastructure that's the town's job uh, but my concern is you did talk and you did recognize on some level that it really was a town infrastructure issue and cost to be dealt with this $200,000 matching fund because you talked to the town manager and he agreed to put forth a separate warrant article to fund the $200,000. That's correct. But what was most disturbing to me once again was at the end of that little statement that was, but if the warrant article doesn't pass, we may want to consider putting mm -hmm. the $200,000 in our budget so it can be funded anyway. Mm -hmm. That is not an acceptable situation as far as I'm concerned at all. You're effectively saying, well, if the voters don't approve the warrant article, well, we're going to give it anyway because we're going to have it tucked into the budget. Mm -hmm. And if they do approve it, well, that's $200,000 extra we get to play with. And it just doesn't look good from the voters' point of view. And I believe I have exhausted myself. I thank you for tolerating me once again. And you don't have to worry when you go home, Kathleen, because he won't be looking for a frowny face picture of you <laughs> on, his, on his computer. And I won't be pouting either. And he won't get one. <laughs> Nathan, did you guys check with revenue admin at all on, that, on the sidewalk and the money? I would suggest you, you check with revenue admin because Tim does have a point on that sidewalk because it is all town town land. Um, just really quickly, I noticed the, the special ed, and this is the out of district, uh, is, uh, is way up. That swings like a pendulum every year. So it ha how many students did you have um, out of district, do you remember? Three. Three. 
Yeah, because the, the costs can be pretty... Uh, and some pretty of them are court-related. You know, we yeah. don't have any control over it. The court makes a decision with a placement, and there's also students who are foster placed right. that are in another community, but their origin is Hampton. Right. So we also have a responsibility there, along with any student that we may um, think that needs some that kind of a setting in order to right. be successful. But it can swing wildly it from does. year to I mean, year. You, There's you, no way to you, anticipate. Our goal uh, is always to have children in their natural settings, which is being home with their peers in Hampton. But, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't always work out. Right. And Kathleen, you mentioned briefly uh, the uh, the other uh, students with other languages. I think last time I talked with you, it was about 16, 18 students. And it's not... Uh, well, we're actually up to about 35 students. 35. Um, and we have students from all over the world now um, and all continents. And um, uh, So it's not all non-English speaking Germans or non-English speaking Italians or whatever. It's, it's, it's a, a variety really, it's of... A variety. It, it's, uh, you know, uh, it, it's kind of neat in the way that they bring their, you know, yeah. um, their culture to our school district. So you have English as a second language um, challenge right. as well. Um, I, I will make two other quick comments uh, because I did attend the open house and passed out about a million flyers. But I, it always warms my heart to see the support the parents give to the schools in this community. You practically get trampled with parents who are so eager to come and be supportive in the schools. I was, I was uh, once again really excited to see that. That was a... A, a tremendous day and in addition you mentioned donations and things people might not know but there are donation boxes for books for other students for clothing for different items that can be used to help youngsters uh, in in uh, needy situations and that goes on all the time in the schools the donation boxes and I think that uh, that's terrific as well Okay, I think we lived through seven and eight. Um, Nathan, do you want to? You know, we do we the throw goals? the district goals into June. We're we're at seven fifty now at night. They probably had almost enough, so I don't think I have anything more. Well, okay. we, have, we just just know that our goals continue yeah. to be pretty um, steady. We're continuously trying to improve in curriculum assessment and instruction. Uh, human capital, those are all the supports that we do for our staff and um, making sure that we have the right number of folks with kids and all, all of that. Um, communication is very important uh, through newsletters. Uh, we use a, a Blackboard Connect sending messages home to parents. Uh, we have just recently um, developed a Facebook page for the district and we are now have a Twitter account so that I can get some tweets out uh, and just quick um, updates, uh, news updates for parents. Uh, that So we're, we're trying to um, always use social media in a way that will help communicate our mission in the district. Um, the board is uh, usually takes care of the governance piece. Their, their focus this year has really been on development of policies, reviewing policies, um, and aligning them to recommendations from the, um, the state um, school board association. Finance and facility, obviously that's Nathan. I think we've, as Nathan said, over the past uh, five or six years, this is our sixth year, by the way, as SAU 90, and our, we've, we've tried really hard to, to keep that budget as level as we possibly can. And the last goal is Hampton Academy. The board has taken a position that they want another recommendation from the committee. The committee is working. We expect that in uh, October we'll have a recommendation to them, uh, but it... Um, it, uh, it clearly that work will continue. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, did you bring pass outs tonight? On no. no. Uh, you can, Jenny can bring some to the October meeting if you would like to. And Nathan did a tremendous job on the uh, spreadsheet for the bonds. We were really impressed with that. Just going to be 16, 17? Yeah, so. I mean, the 17, 18. Just so they know, yeah, we put the 16, 17 budget in there so that you'd know about that. Okay. Um, 17, 18. Uh, as we move forward, we'll reflect uh, in building the 17-18 budget. We'll be back here in December with that. We'll we'll uh, 
consider the curriculum review process that we've been going through. The superintendent spoke about the science work. They've moved on to social studies, uh, uh, continuing with focus on math for sure, advancing our STEAM initiatives. We spoke about STEAM earlier. I can tell you right now, we continue obviously to anticipate some increases in health insurance. Despite the work that we keep doing with wellness, there are some increases. Special education costs will be reflecting those as, uh, as has been mentioned. The New Hampshire retirement system has already rolled out for us a 10.8% increase in the employer contribution for teachers and a 1.9% for non-certified employees. Student enrollment will be a big driver of the budget conversation. The superintendent's always adamant about considering across the board uh, who, who we're going to be serving and what they'll need. And as I had mentioned earlier, we'll try to be attentive to the entitlement grants because of the, the changes in some of those funding streams and optimize the benefits of those. Uh, you know, we can, uh, it's, yeah, we talked about the academy. We talked, did you mention the, the public forum? Let's not miss the opportunity. Right. Just uh, that's a great um, talk point. The, um, the the committee has rec the uh, facilities committee, the Hampton Academy Facilities Committee, has um, recommended that we hold a forum for the community on October twenty fifth at Hampton Academy, seven p.m. We'll be sending out. I'll be sending out a tweet, <laughs> but we'll send out other um, information about that night. We hope you'll join us uh, to share your thinking. Uh, and um, hear the presentation in terms of what the committee's been doing over the last six yeah. months. Sure. And Could our next please? meeting will be the 18th of October, so Ginny can remind us that night yeah. of that date. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Kathleen, uh, could you tell me who who is who comprises the uh, facilities committee and who decides who's on the committee? Well, we have mo mostly the volunteers. I mean, the people have um, uh, contacted my office, um, and they're on it. It's made up of parents. It's made up of, um, there's some teachers on it from Hampton Academy. Um, uh, there's a group of us that really are facilitators to that. The, my, myself and Nathan are on it, but we are the facilitators. So it's really um, heavily a parent group. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we tried to get representation from various groups um, from, uh, from... So to be on the facilities committee, a person would contact the superintendent? Yeah, they contacted me, and then I put together a list, and I, I present it to the school board. The school board decides ultimately who well, sits they didn't, on it? Well, they, um, they didn't go down through the list and, you know, vote on each I'm person. sure it wasn't a they, detailed vetting process. Exactly. But um, they do ultimately. When we have, what not. we have as many volunteers as we have. You, 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 you reach out, and I'm thrilled that people are taking. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on yeah, what the no, facilities no. committee was. Thanks. Yeah. The superintendent, could you just repeat that date one more time while we October have October 25th. It's, it's in the and pass of Brian. Seven o'clock, Brian. Okay. I'm just on a short. Yeah, I hope you can Thank make you. it. It's yeah. good information, and we'll look at the we'll look at what what we what we'll propose and. Um, or what the committee is thinking about, and they're looking, you know, again, they're looking for input before they make a final recommendation to mm -hmm. the school board. Yeah. Parents, the rec director is part of the yeah. committee. You have a member um, of the police the, department. The uh, librarian. Works. Yeah. Librarian. Mostly interested in how you get on it, that's about all. Anybody that volunteered or made any interest at all that said they wanted to be on the committee is on it. Whether they talk to a school board member, a teacher, a Kathleen, or the town manager, whoever asked to be on that committee was on the committee because we wanted a wide range of people to be on that committee. Yeah. Not all the people on there were advocates the first time. Yeah. Some and everybody's sitting down at the table and they're talking and they're work. We have most every aspect of Hampton community right. on that team this time. How many right. people are there? About 30, 20, 30, 25, yeah. 20, 30. 20, 20, 20, 20. 20 and 25. That yeah. sounds like it's a, a large an unruly group, group in but terms of numbers. No, it's no. really, no. Um, it, it, and you know, you always have folks that aren't able to make every meeting. Um, What's your average attendance? About 20. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Still a large yeah. number. Mm -hmm. Great, great discussion. Yep. And we do an agenda, and we also do the follow-up to the minute up to those meetings, and they're all posted on the website right. uh, in the under the facility. So if you want to see what happened at those meetings, you can just go to that. Now that you have your own channel, you could put them on TV as well. That's right. Now, Mr. LeBranch would like to make an just, inquiry. Just one question: Have is it the MS25, the one that you do this month? Have you done it yet? Just got the signatures. 
<laughs> I haven't. So your, yours is done. I haven't uploaded it yet, but you want me to okay. wait? No, 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 no. I just wanted to know where you were with yours. Okay. Yeah, I just got the last signature today. So you're ready to, I'm ready to log in and, yep. okay, thank you very much. Pretty brave, Nathan, <laughs> pretty brave. Anything else? And the only thing I can again? say is we're always, our doors are open, you know that. We Please, if you have questions about the work or the budget or any aspect of the work, please don't hesitate to give Nathan or myself or any of the board members a call and um, we'll happy to be able to accommodate your, your okay. questions. I did turn on channel, I turned on channel 13 at random and I did turn on and I saw nice people talking and no sound at all. Well, can you check so this? That's, that's a problem on some of the ones. The that they sound do. Uh, drives me crazy because they're great, and you see those happy faces, and then I couldn't hear what they were saying, and I said, "Ugh." What kind so, of program was it? I don't. I literally don't remember, Kathleen. I just saw smiling faces. One of the things we have a little bit of problem with is transmitting from 22 to 13. Yeah, but, and that's been where John John is the uh, guy that John helps Jordan, us with yes. the channel 13. That's where we've been having the, the biggest challenges, is that If it's a technical glitch, I mean, the cable yeah. committee has, has a little money in the, a little money in the bank. Yes, they so do. So if they can help with the sound, because it's exciting, and you really want to watch when you turn on. It's exciting to see the youngsters and to see the, the nice things that are happening there, and I really would like to be able to hear it. Good idea. Can I make one comment? Yes. The school department works very hard to make the school safe. They make the school safe from fire, from intruders, from any type of thing that comes from the outside to keep our children safe. Mm. Why wouldn't the school board look at crosswalks that keep the children safe? It was definitely a time to make children safe. And that's the sole purpose of looking into the sidewalks. We need, that's our responsibility. If someone gets hit and we're very lucky at in front of center school someone hasn't gotten hit mm. and we have to make sure and ensure that they have a safe route to school and the children are safe you have another Ginny quick aspect to this too in the old days the kids all went on the school bus right and they don't anymore. and they don't anymore the clog on Winneconnet Road of parents and, and cars and mm -hmm. whatever is is a really dangerous situation and if you know Madam Chair yes sir I appreciate the motivation behind wanting to do the sidewalks. There is no, no question in my mind that the motivation was good. Mm -hmm. The problem comes is that, you know. In the politics and the government. No, in the part. law. In the law. You want to and do it legally. Sure. And, the way, yeah. and the way the voters actually see things when they vote for a school budget, they think they're voting for education, mm -hmm. you know, not town infrastructure. And, you know, that's a, that's a big Big, big part of the well, I'm problem. sure that their parents you know, would like uh, the school, want to ensure that their kids are getting to school safe too. Is part I, of the I agree, and that's really that's part of but, the town's problem. But you know, when it comes to the school bus analogy, which is apt, because I've given some thought to your school bus analogy. Now, if the school bus company that you hire suddenly had broken down their bus, would you actually buy them a bus? Let's well, that's what. No, it's the same analogy because it's a capital. We don't expense. buy buses. We no, buy seats. Building a sidewalk is a capital improvement. Buying a bus is a capital improvement. They're capital improvements. So when you draw the analogy with the school bus, you invite that comparison. The towns bought two buses. I have to deal with the, I have to deal with the town. On, on, on other meetings, not this meeting. I'm right now dealing with the school. <laughs> Mr. Jones, okay, wait, wait one second because I do think we need to clarify, Regina, especially for you. Board of Selectmen has no right to give town land away. That's why I submitted that warrant article last year for the town to be authorized to give the school board the land that they need when the academy bond goes through. That has to be authorized by town voters. So there is no excuse for sidestepping the law. So selectmen do not have the authority to give away land or to authorize use of land without the voters. And I, I mentioned the other night that uh, Mr. Waddell needs to submit that same article so that we are legally clear so you can get the land when the Academy bond passes. And we have had a wonderful evening. 
and we appreciate both of you. Thank you. And Mr. Shepard and Mrs. Ring, thank you for coming because we know you work hard. We know that Jenny makes sure you work hard. Yes, she does. <laughs> yes, she does. But thank you thank for being you very here. Much. We'll see you in December. Yes, right. ma'am. Thank you, Lux. And Jenny will bring pass outs in October and remind of the forum. That's cool. Great. Mr. Silverdick, you are a wonderful, patient member of the community. They're wonderful people, and the best decision that I can recollect was the one made six years ago by the voters to form SAU uh, 21, uh, 90. 90. 90. And when uh, I was a member of the Budget Committee in 2006, we formed a subcommittee to try and deal with SAU 90 to try and learn about what goes on with the school budget, and we had a very difficult time and put a lot of effort into it, and I think Mike, you were on that committee, to sit down with them and go over the details of the budget, and it's a, a refreshing revelation to have to listen to the presentation. We don't necessarily agree with everything that you're saying, especially about the capital uh, plan for the Hampton Academy, but we respect the way they're going about doing their business. Uh, I am here tonight as the representative of, and I thank you for allowing me to talk to you, uh, for Rational Taxpayers of Hampton. And um, I started out just to... I do want to make Norman, a point of order there. Yeah, Norman, sure. you're a resident and taxpayer of the town of Hampton. Right. And it, who... Who you represent is irrelevant from the point okay. of view of making your piece. You have every right to sit here and tell us okay. what you feel. And, but, but we would leave out the any affiliation because you stand on your own as a longtime resident okay. and taxpayer and participant in the life of the community. Okay. Well, thank you. And I, I live at 70 Tide Mill Road in... I'm a 25-year resident of the town of Hampton, right. and I was a former member of the Budget Committee for uh, several years, and I got my feet wet learning about how the town's finances are put together, yeah. and uh, from that, there was a neighbor who suggested that I get involved with uh, community service through the Budget Committee, and I thought it was a great, a great uh, opportunity. And I Make sure we can hear you, Norman, because you tend to be very soft-spoken. Okay, I'll try and speak loud. And Excellent. You can hear me, and the folks at home can hear me, even though it always sounds garbled when uh, you listen to it. Um, anyway, my education came from being members of, uh, a member of this committee and with Mike and you at the time when you were chair and vice chair and other members of the committee. And uh, I learned a lot, and from that went on to become a member of the school board. From being on a subcommittee from the uh, from the budget committee, learning about the school system, and I felt I could make a contribution to the uh, to the school board, which I I thought I did. And then um, from that went on to become uh, a member of the trustee of the trust funds, which I've been doing since 2008. And uh, we we're, uh, we seem to be doing quite well on that with the members of the uh, who are on that board. And I do have a other political life and have been remained a vocal uh, communicator of um, the way our selectmen go about doing business. Um, I work with a group of individuals, and we are sticklers for following the rules, regulations, policies, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire and the ordinances of the town of Hampton, and that we respect that they are done properly, because in order to do the job as a, um, as a member of the budget committee or any other function, you've got to play by the rules. And last year, we had a particular issue with the town, which is why I'm here, because we don't want to see it repeat itself. There were um, numerous violations of purchasing poly policy where there were not competitive, there were no competitive bids for items over $15,000. There were single source bids 
a week effort to get bidding done. And then at the end of the year, there was $455,000 of money encumbered that would have otherwise been Warren articles that the voters would have had a chance to vote on. And because there's always a built-in surplus in the municipal budget, it was approved. And further, in our further review of the, of the activities, uh, when an item is encumbered, it's supposed to be a legally binding obligation of the town at the time it's encumbered, as if it was an accrued liability for those who've had some accounting at the end of the year. The electric bill, you know you spent the money, you accrue it in the month of January you pay it. Well, it turned out that there were certain circumstances where there were no, um, no, uh, and no legally binding obligations on the part of the town. We brought it to the town's attention. We wound up having a particular row about this. And then ultimately, town council said that the, the appropriation of the $455,000 represented a de facto uh, a waiver of the purchasing policy. This, to me, was just baloney. And we, we decided whether we were going to pursue a legal action against the town for this. I mean, not that we argue with a particular item or the, or the, or the worthiness of it. It's just a way of being open communicating to the public, letting the public have the right to vote on things as they should. Uh, we have subsequently, uh, as time has gone on, and one of these happens, one of the key items happens to be the surveillance system for the police, which we, which we advocate, but the way it was done, uh, we didn't care for the process and procedure, and now the cost is way in excess of what the original encumbrance was for, or what were the, the and now the selectmen have the right to, to spend more money than what was originally appropriated because they have the ability to move money from one account to another to cover it. And we have taken the matter up along with several other items with the DRA about uh, process and procedure. We also, uh, brought into fact that there was a issue regarding the, uh, a, uh, the town roads that were being paved and uh, there was supposed to be specific streets involved and there was no communication. The money wasn't being used the way it was originally intended. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gets to be a patronage system of what roads are going to be, what roads are going to be paved versus a system where you say, I'm going to do these roads, then do them. That's exactly what the money is appropriate for. It's not appropriate for something else. And uh, we're waiting for the response from uh, the DRA about this procedure. Well, we're hoping it will initiate a conversation between the uh, DRA and the town regarding how they go about doing business because we don't want to go through this process again. As you spend all this time reviewing detailed budgets of various departments, <clears throat> you don't want your work being in vain and then at the end of the year stuff gets put into the budget or it gets squirreled away or there isn't a warrant article and the voters don't know what's going on. And we put a lot of effort into trying to understand what is happening so that th this can all be properly communicated to the voters and we will continue to do that and that's our that's our mission of our activities will continue to be that way and i just want to let you know that this is a very important item for us to make you aware of this thing as the year end comes down the road that there be the communication between the budget committee which had been, uh, which had had its issues in the past, not be returned to that type of uh, uh, relationship. That there'd be open and good communication. That there'd be transparency, and on a an honest approach to making sure the voters are aware of what is being budgeted and the details associated with the budget. The fact that members of the budget committee wanted to go out and visit with department heads, which is perfectly within their legal right to understand what is in the details of the budget. Not telling the department what to do, because that is not the mission of the budget committee, but you certainly have the right to understand what is in a budget and be able to speak directly with the managers of the department and being told that you couldn't do that mm -hmm. is, is, it was wrong, it was illegal, 
and I hope that that goes away so that you have a you're able to do your mission in the best of your abilities that's it well Norman I want to help clarify a little bit because I think that might be a bit tricky for the public to follow last year was the messiest budget year I ever remember um, the Board of Selectmen tried to keep the budget figure within the uh, that year's parameter because they felt that if there was too much money asked for in the 2016 operating budget that it would fail so they tried breaking out I must have had five separate sets of Warren articles and I objected to a number of them uh, such as the camera system and the uh, uh, vehicles for the fire department, the two uh, administrative vehicles, because I hate to see a warrant loaded with 50 or 80 warrant articles. I think if you need something in the budget, it should be in the budget. So a number of those warrant articles were pulled back in December with the idea that they could be, the mission could be accomplished by using the end of the year surplus, which is okay. Yeah. The Board of Selectmen could have done that. The problem, and Norman has my copy of the January 23rd printout from finance, the, the um, problem is that you have to have signed purchase orders. We had a problem with a $100,000 road project a number of years back that was illegal because there was no signed purchase order and the poor finance director at the time bit the bullet on that one. But you have to have purchase orders for the fire chief's vehicles or whatever it might be before December 31st of that year. The selectmen have every right to tap the surplus, but they have got to have purchase orders. I think that is the problem that you have been elucidating and that has concerned you because of the lack of signed purchase orders commitments that were made before the end of that calendar year. Well, it also goes to a bigger problem of if you have no strategic planning and you don't communicate that, you know, in 2018 and 19 we need the following items yeah. and we need we have to have a plan. Right. And this is what the plan is, so it shouldn't come as a surprise and it's laid down on the table. It's, these things wouldn't be there. Right. It wouldn't be that problem. Also, the town has to be very careful about how much of a surplus. There's a recommended amount of surplus that each right. town is supposed to have. We're not we're not like the federal government. You can operate in a deficit and print money. We're supposed to maintain a surplus. We've been biting into that surplus. Seven to eleven percent. I I think it's a little lower than that, but we should be having five, we five, think it's three to five that we should be yeah. having. When we start dipping below that amount for Correct. for a surplus, that is not good business practices. It affects your ability to bond. So what it does is it you know it, it, it we our antenna goes up because we don't trust what we're seeing, and I think it's so easy to cure. Because we're not opposed to the fact that there's an administrative need for uh, a new vehicle for the, the leadership in right. the fire department or the police department or this a, a new truck need. It's just the way the whole process is. It's trying to sneak something through that mm -hmm. doesn't need to happen. And we'd like to see that come to a, uh, an abrupt end. What, and, yes. What concerned me, what, because we all knew, everybody knew, that the, there was a desperate need for the new uh, camera system in the police department. You want to be able to record what's going on. And we knew that, and that had been discussed, but at the January, I think it's January 25th meeting, I asked the police chief who happened to be before the board that evening, and I said, Chief, have you, are you set now? Are you all fixed? And he said, I haven't had the time. I hadn't even looked at it. It's January, and he, was, he would, gave an honest answer. Right. But he was encumbered. That's showing as an encumbrance from 2015. So it, it, it's a matter of it's a matter of bookkeeping 
and focusing on the details, which sometimes gets lost in translation. Ginny and I go back so far that, <laughs> that we've seen it all, but uh, I appreciate your concerns because your concerns, frankly, are our concerns in this I, case. You know, it's very interesting. We were complaining a couple of years ago about this, this um, pay, uh, project with $100,000. It was a placeholder for... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, I never complain, Norman. Right. And it was the budget committee, and Eileen wrote a letter to the DRA. We, yes. we, we complained to them, and Eileen complained to them as chair, and it got some action from the DRA, and it forced yeah. the town to change the way it was, it, it was conducting its business. All we're asking is that we're all on the same team. We all want a great Hampton. We want the need, Hampton's needs met. Right. And it has to take, and, and we, we, we emphasize this in prior communication, strategic planning. It's a basic tool for most businesses. It's a $50 million enterprise here between the school right. and the town, and the school seems to have a much better handle on those concepts than the town does, and we're hoping the town catches up. But I appreciate your time. I'll answer any questions or threats or whatever you want to but do. But the, the town has been in business for over 375 yeah. years. Right. And there should not be any difficulty with elected officials and employees following the law. Right. Agree. Tim, go ahead. The budget law was not in, in effect 300 years ago, unfortunately. So they don't have the, quite that much experience. <laughs> the... Uh, Items characterized as encumbrances in January of this year. Were they all assigned uh, to a particular vendor? I mean, or were they, I mean, a couple of years ago, I remember there was like a John Doe company as a vendor. Well, I, 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 I did not. To be determined company or something yeah, like that. Well, they, they, we only decided to audit one particular one. Uh -huh. So we went in and on the Freedom of Information, we got all the details and it was very obvious that there was no purchase order and there was very little effort. It was just on a proposal that they made this right. commitment. Right. So there and, was, there was and no I, purchase some of them order, in, but it was on the list of encumbrances. Correct. Yeah. And on what form, do you happen to know what this list of encumbrances was on? Yes, it was the finance director's report to the Board of Selectmen, January 23rd, 2016. Well, and it said it per on. proposal. Yeah. Mm. And that's yeah. not a purchase order. There's a big difference between a proposal and a purchase order. Because mm. no one signed would you, would it, there you was you no bad. that a government enough. record? Well, the finance officer gave it to the Board of Selectmen, and I saved my copy. And when Norman started it, getting excited about record? encumbrances, I was looking for something like from you know. An I MS gave him the copy. Like I can ask for a copy for each member of this yeah, board. But an MS form is un undeniably a government record, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I was that's why I was wondering if it was on an MS form or something. No, like that. no, no it, was, it was just basic business yeah. documentation. It was it's the end of the year recap mm -hmm. from the finance director. But I went and looked at the details of the of the. Uh, of the, of the purchase order and see the you know the proposals that and it was it really wasn't following um, general business practices so it was it was uh, it was my definition would be a placeholder it's something they wanted and they put it in and it wasn't legally binding at that time right so my I, issue I'm is not is arguing whether it was needed I'm sure it was correct. needed it's just the way this whole the whole it gets back to doing following the game by the rules you know. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in process, as you probably know by now, Norm, it's process that I'm I all know, about. I know, Tim. This right? this went right up here. I'll right come on down eye. on anyone that's in violation of process. I think you know that, too. Uh, sorry you're still mad at me maybe about that. But no, 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 it's all right. <laughs> um, it seems to me that any, any government records, including minutes and presentations by management to a, a governing body, such as the Board of Selectmen, these are also government documents. Mm -hmm. right. And, you know, I know, although I'm not prepared to go right to the law at the moment, but I know from my reading of the law that it's actually a criminal offense <coughs> to uh, commit fraud on a government document. To fraudulently okay. state what is known to be untrue on government documents is a criminal offense under the Hampshire law. Well, 
Well, actually, the finance director put the truth down there right. that it was simply a proposal, so she mm -hmm. wasn't lying. Mm -hmm. Guys, this is not the finance director. Yes, the question is who was proposing it and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And I don't want to get into a courtroom right. issue over it, but I am, I am really, Just you know, I went through this, I think two years ago, with uh, To Be Determined Incorporated mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. one of the yeah. one of yes. the deals that was encumbered. Well, that, and I mean, there was a number of them then, mm -hmm. and it was a big to-do, mm -hmm. and it seems to me uh, that uh, there was lots of distortions taking place, both on paper and in public forum. And uh, I'm frankly thought that after all of that noise yeah. that we wouldn't be having to deal with it anymore. I mean, management like got the message, right? Well, I thought and that we dealt with this at the Board of Selectmen meeting, and the town no, no. council was there and said that everything was well, legal. So I don't understand why we time. have to talk about it all so, again right now. So that, that it happened a couple of years ago, committee. the way it did, I expect it to never come up again. And when I hear it coming up again this past year, it's very disturbing. Well, we, Tim, I can say we, we we had the issue in 2012, and the fact that it came up again was was very disappointing because mm -hmm. the the uh, we hoped that that wouldn't be the case, and and it just it 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 affects the the effort of the of the budget committee, and that was and uh, it's just it's so unnecessary, and it doesn't have to be. It's just totally unnecessary. It so affects hopefully everything. This year the budget will not committee's affected. The voters affected. Yeah. Uh, yep. Taxpayers affected, and, and and the truth is, is that you know the people who are involved in this activity, and I'm not referring to the board of selectmen, right? But the people who are involved in this activity certainly were educated in 2012. You say the year yeah. was, sure, because we went through a lot of townwide education on that. It was no. a somewhat painful, one might say. I'm, so it's hard to imagine that their memory just kind of got lost. In no, I, I, am, I am totally optimistic in being the nature of <laughs> my beast is that this will not happen again this year. And I think... Well, I remember we, saying that three years ago. Well, years ago. The, as we get closer to the year end and as November rolls around and, you, you know, you start seeing what will be the sur surplus for the year and if you need to do these kind of de decisions we don't have a purchasing manager so the people who are would Im implement these kind of things happen to be the department heads and their staff and we need to get you know make these decisions a lot sooner and do it properly especially if it's in for the best interest of the community that's all i can say mm -hmm. This is actually a, an object lesson for this committee mm -hmm. as we head into the deliberations because if we start seeing operating expenses reduced to special money articles, stuff that should be in the budget, and then there's the potential for dumping like ha it happened last year, we want to be very wary about that. We don't want to see things that should be normal operating budget items uh, coming to us in the form of special money articles. And last year was a dreadful mess, the worst one I remember. Yeah, and, and there were things, that, I mean, there were so many things that went on that compounded the wording of Warren articles. The, 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 oh, yeah. It was supposed to be the, the tax effect to on uh, a tax rate, and that was obfuscated in the in the wage article. I remember when you were arguing about it, the budget committee was arguing about it. These were... These are the kind of things you just never want to see happening. It doesn't have to be. I mean, we all we know people need increases. We know uh, that the town has to run and has its costs increase over a period of time. It just has to be done properly. So. Thank you very much for coming in and for being vigilant. All right, and I wish you. Toes. I wish you folks a great budget year. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Just, wish us luck, Norman. We'll need it. See you later. Thank you, Norman. Um, Mr. Jones, you asked for time for in behalf of the IT yes. committee. Yes, um, we haven't really given a report in a very long time. The IT subcommittee, that is, and uh, with the advent of us now having with Nick's resignation, we've now lost one third of our membership. Uh -huh. So we thought it was appropriate to uh, get um, get ourselves either terminated or re uh, reconstituted as viable by this new body. So. Yeah. In the end, we hope to ask you to do one or the other to the IT subcommittee. Okay. You need a volunteer? To not, join it's not so much that we need a volunteer. Okay. Uh, it's not even so much the number of people on the subcommittee. It's uh, the general sense of whether or not this 
Budget Committee wishes to deal with IT issues on their own, but in the context of the Budget Committee work, or whether it wants to have someone focused on yeah. the IT issues and okay. the details outside of the Budget Committee. And that's really the issue at hand. But also I wanted to take the opportunity to kind of give you an update as to what has and hasn't been going on. Okay. okay. Um, last year, as you know, the IT subcommittee um, did a lot of uh, looking into various things, um, but I, I want to speak primarily to the issues that we were dealing with this year mm -hmm. because they're really left over mm -hmm. from the town side, not the school uh, side, but just the town, mm -hmm. and that was relative to the email cloud solution. Um, yeah. As yeah, as you recall, last year, we uh, management wanted to uh, take money out of the trust fund, some, something close to $30,000, and eliminate a trust fund and pay for uh, effectively one year's worth of cloud email service. The IT subcommittee uh, was opposed to that. Unfortunately, the uh, deliver session kind of uh, neutered the, uh, the Warren article. So uh, we managed to hold on to that trust fund money. Uh, the IT committee had also, uh, in, in its deliberations, and did not disclose it publicly uh, because we con were concerned about it being possibly operational. Um, and so basically what it was was investigation done directly with the vendor as opposed to through some third party. We were able to secure some 70% savings over the proposal last year. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm very substantial number. And since this is an annual cost, mm -hmm. it kind of adds up. Yeah. And, and so the IT subcommittee had decided uh, that uh, we needed to, f to follow up this year, and that's why we reconstituted. And with you know Nick being on our committee, and him being the chairman, and him having some uh, communication channels, shall we say, with the town, we thought we could take an informal approach to getting a meeting to discuss this emerging plan, as we called it, as I recall. Uh, so we had made that decision in, in the beginning of May to have Nick arrange that informal meeting. And uh, that meeting, and we met again in July and reaffirmed the need to have that informal meeting. And uh, it was a request to put out a, an IT subcommittee meeting prior to this meeting, uh, which Nick didn't respond to, presumably because he was busy on his new job or whatever. In any case, he resigned, and that left Mike Pierce and I to say, what do we do now? And my response, and I think he agreed, was, well, let the budget committee decide what we do now because we're really, you know, we're an organ of you guys. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where we're at right now. There's a 70% savings potential out there, which, you know, needs to get discussed with, uh, with appropriate personnel in town. Uh, it hasn't been done yet, uh, and with the loss of Nick and, and how we're going to achieve that communication yeah. channel is now an open question, and the bigger question is do you want the IT subcommittee to continue to exist or not, and I'll let Mike fill in for anything I might have missed. I don't think you missed much of anything. <clears throat> my concern is that... Uh, Speak up, Michael, so we can hear you. <clears throat> well, my, my concern is that we look at the cloud application yeah. Uh, and look at it with a critical eye towards what do we need now versus what we need next year and a year after. And the way I understand it is, is like the school, they started off with email first and basically bought, have a plan where it supports email. And uh, then later on, you started implementing different sections. Well, that's what you would do because First of all, everybody has to get used to the new email thing. That's a task that mm -hmm. needs to be taken care of. And if you start implementing a Word and Excel and all the other things that the town employees might do, the first year they're going to be overwhelmed probably with all the newness and difference. And so therefore, looking at from a smooth switchover, you'd probably want to introduce one thing at a time, like the email and then gradually work in the other processes as you see fit and you get your people trained wow. to deal with it. Huh. And that's the approach we looked at it. That's how we get that 70% cost savings by 
not buying the whole load of hay the first day. Well, the decision on that point, uh, well, that's a, a kind of an operational management decision. It wasn't from us. It was the proposal that was being made last year by management that mm. the reason they were going after it mm. was was for the email. Oh. And, yeah. and the fact that all the other products are already resonant on mm. the existing PCs. It didn't make sense to buy all, the, all those products again. Good. The cloud solution. Yeah. Good. Right. The email solution made perfect sense. Schools are actually a slightly different topic because um, they only use the email portion of the uh, Microsoft uh, product suite, and uh, they have reasons for that. Um, Microsoft's not a solution for everything, you know. And uh, but the, the school doesn't pay a, a, not one penny for that software or that service. And the reason is Microsoft offers that free for. Uh, for schools, for academics. Because they're frugal. Right. Well, guess what? Microsoft offers deals for governments as well. Good. And of course, if you go through a third party and pay one to pay retail, you're going to pay considerably more. If you want to go through Microsoft and deal with their kind of uh, slow to respond, but eventually do respond, government and uh, uh, sales force, uh, you're going to pick up something on the order of 70% savings. And that's pretty much where it comes from, down from, is looking at what you're actually trying to implement and going directly to the source and uh, to a supplier and saying, what's that cost? And it really is that simple. It's not all that complex in that respect in terms of uh, contract negotiation. Stephen? I guess the um, both Mike and Tim were on a, um, a committee that was a town committee an IT committee. Um, Selectman's committee. Selectman's committee. You were on it also. Yes, I was uh -huh. for, a, for a while. And um, <laughs> the only committee only existed for six months. <laughs> I, guess, I guess the question I have is that do the selectmen want some advice? And that's a question to our select rep. Because we can, we can, we can have this committee, we can form a committee, but is the selectman going to be receptive to, have, to ah. talking with these people? Ah. That's the question I have. Good. Because the people that you want to talk to are employees of this town, am I correct? Right. Okay, That's well that has now, to go right? through the selectman. And so, uh, can we really make a, a Well, a I think ideally the selectman, I mean, I haven't heard an actual I uh, well, thought what, on this process. That's why I'm asking because it would, everything would go through the chairman yeah. to the town manager and then Make to an set something up with. Well, should we? Well, this is the situation. You know, we as a budget committee, we, we can go according to the law and talk to anybody we want to. As a practical matter, of course, we don't want to be interfering with operations and that kind right. of thing. So yeah. we have to be sensitive to that. And the IT subcommittee has been. And we understood that Nick had, had the ability to communicate without ruffling feather, shall we say, <laughs> with people and maybe could secure an informal meeting to at least get some exposure to this uh, in, an, in a kind of private way, if you know what I mean. Right. Uh, and that's all we were trying to do. Okay. And, I mean, I'm going to so, be here at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, so if you want me to bring it up, I can do that. Good. Well, so. I, I think that uh, I think Nick did initially broach the idea and what he reported to us in the July meeting was that uh, Christy believes that she would be the correct person to deal with. Well, my appointment's with Christy tomorrow, so. And uh, so how would you like me to proceed or us to proceed? Well, I mean, I think so. This is a cloud product offered through Microsoft directly. Yeah, You're dealing with Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. And so it would, I'm assuming, drastically increase. The yeah, see, well, the problem was originally brought up in the budget committee about three years ago when Paul was representing the IT budget and talked about him spending an enormous amount of time fighting uh, spam. And uh, so the, the idea once again surfaced from the IT, uh, Selectman's IT committee that maybe you should look into this uh, service because Microsoft takes care of all that spam for you, along with all of your email archiving and, 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 and archival reporting that any, any court might require. Right. It's all done as part of the service. Um, and so well, that's when they came back the subsequent year with this, you know, uh, idea. It was just, you know, uh, kind of uh, too broad for what they were actually trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. 
Can can we cut to the chase and I, I did. I'm trying to I mean, get yeah, I mean I'm here. just gonna can I just talk to Christy in the morning <coughs> and see what she has to say? Absolutely. I would, I would welcome that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can say I can I say mean, this, Regina. Tim has investigated this thoroughly. I know he has I know he's a computer guy. So, thoroughly, yeah. thoroughly. And <laughs> I think of myself as a human guy, actually. Right. <laughs> and if, and I, think I know it's hard to believe, but we're figuring <laughs> extraterrestrial. <laughs> I, I think he too, can yeah. bring some information <laughs> right. that's yes. very, very Absolutely. useful. Okay. Good. Stephen, thank you for stepping in. And that's I know good. that she is, you know, completely slammed right now with the budgets, mm -hmm. but I have oh, a meeting yeah. with her in the morning, so, I mean, good. Mm -hmm. I can just bring it up with her. I don't see why that would be an issue. Okay, I appreciate that. We have sounds a consensus like of the committee that that sounds like a sensible thing to do because we really Absolutely. aren't qualified to do anything on that. And the, the, the question I'm putting forth to the committee, and I very much appreciate you, you taking care of that, yep. but from a committee's point of view, yes. do you want uh, you know, an IT committee or you know, subcommittee to continue or not? Well, I, you might as well continue yeah. until you get the job done, well, right? Yes, anyway, yeah. Well, well, I Just, think the need is for the Board of Selectmen to have an IT committee. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree with that, but they yeah. don't. Mm. Well, then get together and have a nice conversation and somebody figure it out so we can be modern and get it over with. And perhaps report back to us next Yes. Meeting. I'll report back as frequently as you wish. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Good. If you want me on the next next yeah. meeting, I will. I will no. be uh, ready to report. That sounds minutes. very nice. So now. that's a consensus, I assume. Yeah. Yes. So we may have yes. a better consensus. A consensus to get done. it done. Yeah. Thank you for that time. Now. Only one more question. If you want to have two or three people on the committee. I think you two will do fine. You've been fighting your way through yeah. it. Get it over with. Have a nice discussion. Regina will be helpful. Do something modern and have done with it. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, we're in a position of having to approve four months' worth of minutes. Um, Let's do it. That won't happen again. But I need a motion. The minutes are the draft minutes are all online. They have been online under the budget committee. I'll accept a motion to approve the minutes of March fifteenth, twenty sixteen. I'll make that motion. This will second it. Second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Madam I will Chair. next accept Madam a motion Chair. for the minutes of April nineteenth, and I have a correction to make in on those minutes. Madam Chair. I'm sorry. If I may. Yes. Uh, I have been having difficulty accessing them online because the website is down, continues to be down. I haven't had a chance to read them. Every time I go there, it seems to be down. So I haven't been able to read them. So I thus will be abstaining on all of these okay. if we're going to continue making motions. Okay. Um, I do have one quarter of order in regards, to, in regards to the 17th. Yes. Um, can we put the date? Which well, wait a minute. We're on April 19th at the moment, Brian. So oh, I smile, did. Okay. Smile at me. This was March. I, I will accept I'll accept a motion to approve the minutes for the Budget Committee of April 19, 2016. I'll, I'll make, make a motion. motion. Okay. Second. Now, the, and the motion has been made and seconded. Now, I want to make a correction to those draft minutes, and I didn't want to do that at our June meeting because we hadn't had a chance to look through them. Mr. Um, Kravitz was showing as unexcused absence on those minutes, and that was not true. He got the wrong date in this, the first email oh, that was yeah. sent out, and so I would respectfully suggest that we change that uh, Mr. Kravitz's designation to excused on those minutes. That was not his fault. Other than that, I have no further corrections. Can we change the date on that? Wasn't that the 14th and it was actually the 15th? I looked this up uh, online and got the the dates on here. Unless oh, okay. I did. Oh, all right. I didn't. Yeah. Double check. Okay. Okay. So in favor of approving the minutes of April 19th, 2016. I'll make that a motion. one correction. Well, there. Okay. Okay. And I second. Have, I have to abstain because I wasn't... Okay. That means Mr. LeBranch is abstaining. Okay. The minutes of May 17th, um, 2016. I'll make the motion. Mr. Pierce moves to approve. Second. Mr. Uh, Plus seconds. I have no corrections on that. Does anyone have any corrections on the draft? Okay. In favor of approving the May 17, 2016 minutes. Okay. Brian, are you voting, my dear? Wait a minute. Oh. 
That's what I have is the May 17th. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. no, um, you, oh, I'm, I'm just. That's all right. Okay. Double checking. Yep. All set. I'm, abstain I'm abstaining. And, and Judy I, is abstaining. And okay, and then, I'm and Mr. Ladd is abstaining. Thank you both. I'm glad you remembered. And June 21st, which are the only minutes we really should be handling today, and those those were not done. So I'll accept a motion for the minutes of June 21, 2016. Second. Mr. Pierce moves. Mr. Plough seconds. Any corrections? Okay. In favor? Unanimous. Okay. Now, the protocol for the 2017 budget. I have to abstain, Mary Lewis. Oh, you're abstaining. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. No problem. All right. 2017 budget. This is a tough time of year. We'll be having a regular meeting on the 18th of October, just our regular monthly third Tuesday of the month meeting. We want to, I'll try to get a heads up, and we may have some inklings from the Board of Selectmen, I'm not sure, on where they might be going with the 2017 budget. I don't know whether there will be some draft warrant articles or any such. But we will try to tailor the meeting to at least get us up to date so that we're prepared for the budget process. I will consult with uh, Christina and check out the budget meeting dates. Because once we get the budget in our hand, which is going to be by the end of October, we're going to have to hustle. And what I'm going to try to do, Nick said I believe that he was investigating dates for the meetings, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to go in with Christina and sit down and check and make sure we have confirmed dates. I'm going to try for Tuesdays and Thursdays only so that you know. No meeting Thanksgiving week. And I will have a printout for you of the precise schedule, and some snow days will be included. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to know that. I am asking all of you, please, to be sure that you either read online the monthly end close um, the statement from the finance officer, from Mrs. Pulliam, yeah. so that you are familiar with, right now I have July, the end of July, and I know when I go in tomorrow I'll be able to get the end of August, because I guess you guys just approved that. Yeah. But it will help you and us if you keep up to date. If you do not want that online and you're getting paper copies, please go in and pick up your copy. Because I don't like that online stuff, so I go in for my paper copy. I'm sure. Yes, sir. When you get the calendar, can you also email it to us? Yes, we will email it, and I'll also have some printouts. And I will forward uh, to the selectmen, obviously, and to the school board. So everybody's on the same page. Well, Nick, uh, re in the minutes for April 19th, he'd already picked out a bunch of days. So you got to... Well, I'm not yeah. sure. That's why I want to go in, because I'm not positive. Uh, I want to go see what's on the calendar. That's what he stated to the April 19th yes. meeting. But I want, yeah. to, I want to look at... I want to review the whole thing so we're not floating around in here. He and the a, school he, he budget... Picked, he picked 11 days other than... Well, the I'll, I'll check, though, because you got to go, and you got to go into January as well. Right. Um, I will check, um, and the school board will be scheduled for early December, as okay. we normally do. And I will make sure you get that, Ginny. Um, I'm going to ask you to uh, pay attention to the selectmen's meetings as best you can. Now with the online video streaming, uh, it's pretty easy to do so that you have some of the details in your head instead of being in here cold turkey. Um, I'm going to ask people to be as succinct as possible, kind of line up your questions and, and focus so that we're not taking uh, forever to get through the deliberations. Uh, as soon as the draft warrant articles are produced, and last year I think we went through about five versions of them because I kept getting hands full of them, uh, we'll be able to focus on that because that will dictate to some degree our approach to the actual operating budget. Like I said, I wasn't happy last year that operating budget expenses were yanked out to be special money articles. That's not the way to, to go about it. If there are genuine needs, we want to see them in the budget. 
So I'm um, asking all of you please to show up as diligently as you can so that we have a full, um, full board to deliberate. Uh, do you have any questions at all? Uh, call me anytime, email me, questions, uh, ideas, things that you want brought up. Please communicate because I will be there for you uh, and I will be happy to do or answer questions or do anything you need as members of the committee. Mr. Ladd, sir. I don't have a question. I have a community announcement, if I may. Thank you. Yes. Not on the agenda. Excellent. No. <laughs> He's welcome to do that. On Wednesday, September 28th, at the police station training room between 6.30 <coughs> and 8.30 p.m., the town will be presenting a flood preparedness workshop that will include discussions of flood hazards, flood plain regulations, flood insurance, and flood protection. The town planner, I believe, will be the one uh, chairing that presentation, and I want to compliment the town for doing it. And this can affect the flood rates for our community mm -hmm. yep. as people participate, understand whose property is at risk, and also another factor, and I don't know if you guys have made this clear uh, in the precinct, if your property is a second residence, your flood premiums are going to be higher. If that is not your primary residence. That's a we, true statement. Yeah. Madam Chair, Did the rates you're referring to is actually federal flood, flood insurance rates, rates correct? correct? I also wonder how much of an effect the floods in Louisiana are having on those rates here in Hampton. Well, when I went to a presentation a couple of years ago, when the uh, the FEMA gentleman from Boston was there, the, the Board of Selectmen went over to Marston, and we had a little preview, and I asked the nice gentleman <laughs> why people who own property and have a flood loss and rebuild on the same spot and have another loss, why they're allowed to do that, and he looked me right in the eye, and he was a very nice man, and he said, talk to your congressman. Right. Well, that doesn't answer my question. How does, the, how does the federal insurance rates get affected in, here in Hampton as a consequence of floods in Louisiana? Well, you know, well in Louisiana, Louisiana, you know, eighty percent of the properties did not have flood insurance. Yeah, right. So right. They weren't in a flood plain. I know. The, the flooded areas this time was not in a floodplain. Right. Mm -hmm. But some of them did have flood insurance yeah. and a very low premium yeah. because they weren't in a floodplain. But this, this, as I understand, it's a nationwide calculation. If there are losses, <laughs> exactly. there are losses. But anyway, so. Did you contact all the people who live in the precinct? Area? They got letters last year, Bob, right? Yep. The selectmen sent, sent out, out 4,000 letters. No. We paid for him. Last year. You poster. did. <laughs> you certainly yeah. did. We, well, the problem is if somebody else has a house and there's a mortgage, they're required to Yes, yeah, sir. If you have a mortgage, your bank will make you. Yeah. We've been working like very closely yeah. adjourn with the planner's office. I would like to make a motion to adjourn, please. Yeah. Yes. I was oh, I'm sorry, Bob. Yes, yes, I, I second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Bob. <laughs> well, the gentleman who did all the talking yield to me. <laughs> <laughs> I any, thought you were done. I'm sorry. I don't have the floor. I can't yield. Yeah, gentlemen, any motion to adjourn will have a specific time attached to it. So your motion to adjourn at what hour? 8.51 p.m. 8.51 p.m. Uh, Bob's still trying Wait to Wait a talk minute. Talk. I, I, I withdraw the Bob motion finish. because I would like to let the gentleman oh, yeah. finish. Don't be so rude. I was. Or obviously, no one was listening. <laughs> <laughs> I was too. <laughs> so on that basis, please continue. <laughs> I can get this at home. <laughs> <laughs> we have been working closely with the planner's office on the community rating yes, system yes. for two years. Yeah. And hopefully they are very close to getting into it. We may get in as, when they get in, it'll be either a nine or an eight, possibly an eight. Each one of those rep numbers represents a 5% decrease in the insurance for the primary resident owners. Mm -hmm. They will be at our precinct meeting in November, so come on down or, li or see it online later on. Yeah, they should be able to bring us pretty much up to speed on that. Okay. Bob, that, you, you and the commissioners too, 
Email the budget committee. You have a list of the members of the budget committee. Send us an email for something like that. Just send us a reminder email because you have every. You should have all all the addresses for the members of the budget committee. Give us a heads up when you do. Well, they're online. Like they're all, yeah. Well, the new ones, huh? Okay, so yeah, at probably. eight at eight fifty eight. <laughs> Eight fifty-two. Eight. Don't he's, go by he's that. He's on regular time. That's, oh, okay, that's... okay. At eight fifty-two, I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Thank you, sir. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. In favor of adjourning. Thank you all. Thank you, Channel Twenty-Two. And thank you to Channel Twenty-Two. Wonderful.